all the hindrances, I stop you. They are stopped in heaven in Jesus' name. And whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. What authority you have in your mouth tonight? What power you have in your mouth tonight? That everything you lose here on earth, thank God, heaven will support you. Heaven will back you up. And heaven will bind and lose that thing in Jesus' name. Verse 19, again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree, husband and wife, if two of you shall agree, brother and sister, if two of you shall agree, a friend with another friend, if two of you shall agree, the pastor and the member, if any two of you shall agree on earth as touching, as touching, as touching anything, there's no limit to asking tonight. It is anything. And thank God your prayers are answered. Yeah. If two of you shall agree as touching anything that you shall ask, 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 it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. I am blessed tonight. I am blessed tonight. Your doors are open tonight. And your prayers are answered tonight. And all the failures of the past, they are cleared away tonight in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, verse 19. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only, and said unto it, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. Any tree standing in your way, not bearing any fruit. Any tree standing in your way, having leaves only, and yet is not putting anything into your life, anything good. is sapping your energy. is sapping your money. is sapping all the nutrients. And yet there's no fruit. Tonight, as you open your mouth and say, dry up. It is dried up. Yeah. Verse 20, and when the disciples saw it, you will see it. The marvel saying, how soon is the fig tree withered away? Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if ye have faith and doubt not, if ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say to this mountain, your time has come. If ye shall say to this mountain, it's talking about the mountain of problems, mountain of sickness, mountain of infirmity, mountain of challenges, mountain of impossibilities in your life. If ye shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. It shall be done. You have a miracle already. It shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer. You see that? It's, it's waiting for you. Heaven is waiting for you. The Lord is waiting for you. All you need to do is ask. All things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer. Believing, you shall receive. I will receive. I have received. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now, unto him that is able, 
unto him that is able. The God we're serving tonight, is he able? Yes. Able to save? Yes. Answer, able to save? Yes. Able to heal? Yes. Able to deliver? Yes. Able to cleanse the leper? Yes. Able to raise the dead? Yes. Ah, you are not sure? Yes. Is our God able? That challenge of your life tonight, you see, able to roll it away. Yeah. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or seek according to the power that worketh in us. Where is the power of God working tonight? I said, where is the power of God working tonight? And according to that power, he will go beyond your prayer. He will go beyond your expectation. Everything you are asking, he will do for you. And then he will do exceedingly above, abundantly above all that you ask or seek according to the power that worketh in you. If there's anything inside you there that is disturbing your life, the power will penetrate your life tonight and drive everything away in Jesus' name. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Yeah. Let me just quickly tell you why it, why it says world without end. There are some people that say that miracles have stopped happening. No miracles again, no healings again, no deliverance again, no answer to pray again. But it says God is still able. And even to the end of the world and beyond the end of the world, you will continue to answer prayers. Number one, asking in prayer as a child. Number two, appropriating the provision with confidence appropriating the provision with confidence. Here we need to really understand. God is expecting that you know already that as you open your mouth and you ask, that he has answered. And then there are many people after they have prayed, they are sitting back. Some of them are still crying. Some of them are still mourning. And the Lord is waiting for them. It says, it's there, take it, it's there, it's yours. I pray you'll appropriate tonight. And let me give you the illustration here in Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, we're reading from verse 29. Verse 29, it says, Luke chapter 15, verse 29, and he answered, said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid. Here is a child, here is a son, dutiful, here is a son, obedient. Here is his son abiding in the house. Here is his son walking with the father, walking for the father. But he didn't know what he had and couldn't appropriate. He didn't take anything. He was living with complaint and with murmuring. He was living with sorrow. He said, I never transgressed your commandment at any time and you never gave me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. You never gave me. Look at verse 31. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me. All that I have is thine. All that I have is thine. He, he had everything. He possessed everything. All the Father had in the mind of the Father, in the understanding of the Father, everything belonged to him. But he was waiting. He never gave me a key. He never gave me anything. The Lord has given you everything. 
what you have to do is to stretch out your hand of faith and grab it and receive it. It is yours already. Mark chapter 7. Appropriating the provision with confidence. Mark chapter 7, verse 27. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled. For it is not meet to take the children's bread to cast each to the dogs. Let the children first be filled. The woman was asking for deliverance for her daughter, release for her daughter. And Jesus said, It's the children's bread. Many of the children of Israel did not even know that. The Pharisees did not know that. The Sadducees did not know that. They didn't appropriate. It was theirs. In the mind of Christ, every one of the children of Israel should take healing like breakfast. They should take healing like the provision of their parents because it's the children's bread. Look at this woman. She appropriated it. She said, I'm not going away from here empty-handed. Somebody there, I am not going away from here empty-handed. After all, I'm a child of God. Somebody there, I am a child of God. And I must appropriate what belongs to me. Look at verse 20. Look at verse 28. And she said, she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. He said, I'll take the crumbs. And when the crumbs are falling on the ground, I don't need permission from those who are sitting on the table to take the crumbs. I'll take the crumbs. And then he said unto her, For they say, Go thy way. The devil is gone out of thy daughter. For they say, You know your right. And you know that this is your provision. And that this belongs to you. And because you know that, and because you voice that out, go your way. The devil has no choice. He has to go out from your daughter. Your daughter is delivered tonight. Your son is delivered tonight. Your parents are delivered tonight. Appropriate. Take it. Because it is yours. It is mine. It is mine. First John chapter 3, verse 21. First John chapter 3, verse 21. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. I have confidence toward God. I have confidence toward God. You didn't come by accident. You came the right way. And you came to the right place. And the blessing of the Lord is yours tonight in Jesus' name. Anybody having confidence in God there tonight? The Lord confirm it in your life. Verse 22, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Whatsoever, we come with that confidence. We come with that trust. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Look at chapter 5, verse 14. Chapter 5, verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. And this is the confidence that you have in him tonight. That if we ask anything according to his will, tell me, he has said your prayer. He heareth us. 
And if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. I have the petitions I desired of him. That's the end of your heart when you were coming and you said, I'm going to that power night. I'm going because of this reason. The Lord is going to affirm it and the Lord is going to confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. In this, uh, chap in this verse, the verses I'm going to read now, I want to show you that your answer is already there. I didn't say your answer is on the way. I said your answer is already there. But you must stretch out your hand and appropriate it. I will get it. In uh, Genesis chapter 21, verse 15, and the water was paint finished in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shops, and she went and saw and sat her down over against him a good way, as it were a bow shot. For she said, let me not see the death of the child.
Praise the Lord. You believe like I believe. I said you believe like I believe that something must happen to you today. You will not escape it. It's coming my way. I said it's coming my way. The might of the Almighty will walk in your life. What are you there? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every brother and every sister, every boy and every girl, all our invitees and everyone here. Lord, I pray tonight, this will be the moment of your might in every life, in Jesus' name. Touch everyone. Transform every life. Do something unforgettable in every life tonight, in Jesus' name. Let everyone in this place experience the might of the Almighty. Confirm it, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. As I've told you before, I'm telling you again, there will always be an amen in your life. Tonight, we come together for something special. Something spectacular. And something unforgettable. Because when you come and you want to realize that this is the moment. This is the time. This is the very day that the might of the Almighty will be manifested in your life. Every mountain, it will roll away. Every challenge, it will solve. And all those naughty, naughty things in your life, you want to go this way and they double cross you and they hinder you tonight. Everything will be blown away in Jesus' name. You will conquer. I will overcome. I said I will overcome. You will overcome and conquer in Jesus' name. Tonight, I'm talking to you on living by the might of the Almighty. Living by the might of the Almighty. Walking by the might of the Almighty. Laboring by the might of the Almighty. Progressing by the might of the Almighty. You are here tonight. I can tell you confidently that every stumbling block is taken out of your life. I can assure you tonight as you come in connection. As you come, reconciliation. As you come and you attach yourself to the Almighty. Every impossibility will become possible tonight in Jesus' name. Living by the might of the Almighty. Let me remind you. From eternity past, from the deathless past, until eternity future, until the endless eternity, God... It's always almighty. He introduces himself as the almighty God. That means there is no limit to his might. When it says almighty, that means there's no limit to his power. It's all powerful. That means there's no limit to his strength. Anything you want to carry, you cannot carry. The almighty is so powerful and his strength has no limit. He will carry it for you. There is no limit to his strength. He has the strength and he's going to even support you. He's going to be by your side. You are strong tonight. Let the weak say, you are strong and strength is passing into your body right now. Into your soul and into your mind. There is no limit to his dominion. He has authority. He has sovereignty. There's no limit to his ability. There's no limit to his authority. There's no limit to his omnipotence. You know what he does? In his almighty power, he grants us the might that we need to live by. From Genesis to Revelation, God is revealed as the almighty. He's revealed to his people as the almighty. Look at Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, I am the almighty God. You see that introduction? God comes to Abraham and God is talking to you tonight. He comes to you tonight. He said, 
What's your problem? What's your mountain? What's your challenge? What's the roadblock? What's the hindrance there? He introduces himself to you tonight. I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Every hindrance is taken out of the way. We're looking at Job chapter 8. Job chapter 8. As these verses are being read, they are being fulfilled in your life. Every promise mentioned today is coming to your account. Every power revealed today is going to work for you in Jesus' name. Look at Job chapter 8, and I'm reading here from verse 5. Job chapter 8, reading from verse 5, it says, If thou wouldest seek God betimes, and make thy supplication to the Almighty. You're not praying tonight to a weak God, a powerless God, a limited God. You're praying and making your supplication before the Almighty. He will answer your prayer. If thou wert pure and upright, surely, surely, now he will awake for thee. Surely. Somebody shall surely. He will awake for thee. And make thy habitation, the habitation of the righteous, prosperous. Prosperity has come. Your debts will be paid. Your needs will be met. You come to the creator of the heavens and the earth. And all those challenges of famine, all the challenges of scarcity, everything, the Lord will roll away. Hey, look at verse 7. Look at verse 7. Mark it in your Bible. Hold it in your Bible. Hold it in your heart. And every time you understand, this is going to be your experience. From this moment of his mind, he says, Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end will greatly increase. I must make this one personal to myself. Though my beginning was small, yet my latter end should greatly increase. There's somebody there, you feel you are small, you feel you are insignificant, you feel you are a nobody, you are going to become somebody. You feel nobody knows you, heaven knows you. And people on earth will know you. Look at verse 7. Though my beginning... I'm saying it for myself. Though my beginning was small, yet my latter end should greatly increase. Amen. That amen is for your life. It means so let it be, so let it be, so let it be. Let the blessing come upon your life. Let the glory come upon your life. Psalm 91, Psalm 91, I'm reading from verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. You see here tonight? I said, is she here tonight? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the... Shall abide under the shadow of the... You are under a shadow. Satan will not trouble you there. Evil spirits will not trouble you there. That powers will not trouble you there. I will say, you see, the man is making it personal. He says, it's not just that he that dwelleth, he said, I am the one. I said, I am the one. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Surely, help me shout the word surely. Surely, he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. You're free. As we come to God, and we understand, the moment we get to God, the moment of his might begins in our lives. The might of the Lord, number one, will be for us, will be for you. The might of the Lord will be with us, will be with you. The might of the Lord will be in us, will be in you. Tonight is that night. I said tonight is that night. 
you are getting something here tonight. The might of the Almighty will walk in your life in Jesus' name. The three things we're looking at before we pray, tonight we're going to pray. And every prayer you pray, everything that comes out of your mouth will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Number one, comprehending the manifold grace of the Almighty. Comprehending, comprehending, knowing it, understanding it, perceiving it, and sensing it, and knowing that this is mine. Comprehending the manifold grace of the Almighty. Number two, this number two, it will be fulfilled in my life. I said, this number two is going to be fulfilled in my life. What's it, number two? Conquering mighty giants through the Almighty. Every giant against your life, conquer tonight. Every power against your life, conquer tonight. Conquering mighty giants through the Almighty. Number three, there is a confirmation. Before you go out of those doors tonight, a confirmation. In your heart, a confirmation. In your body, a confirmation. In your family, a confirmation. And all those medical reports, you know, I got this and they said this and they said this. Don't worry about that. The Almighty is here tonight. It will turn everything to your good in Jesus' name. Number three, number three, confirming the measureless gifts of the Almighty. Confirming the measureless gifts of the Almighty. Coming to number one, comprehending, comprehending the manifold grace of the Almighty. We're coming to First Peter. In First Peter, I am reading from chapter four. First Peter, chapter four, and we're looking at verse ten. First Peter, chapter four, and we're reading from verse ten. You'll see it says the grace of God is manifold. It's not just you know I got saved. Praise the Lord, you got saved. There's more to the grace of God. Look at this, chapter four, verse ten. It says in chapter 4, verse 10, 1 Peter, as every man has received the gift, every man will receive the gift. I said every man will receive the gift. God counts you in. Don't count yourself out. God is thinking about you. Don't say, I have nothing. No, you have everything. I have. I said, I have. Look at this. As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of here is where what, what we're looking for the manifold grace of God the manifold grace of God understand we're talking about the almighty he is so mighty he cannot fail he is so mighty that there is nothing impossible for him and he says he comes to us through the manifold grace manifold grace uh, let me show you what it says about the grace of god so that you'll understand how yours is included it will solve your problem it will take away your sorrows Look at chapter 5 of Romans. Romans chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 17. And we're looking at the manifold grace of God. The many-sided grace of God. Look at uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 17. It says, For if by one man, man's offense, death reigned by one, much more, much more, they which receive, what kind of grace? I said, what kind of grace? You know, sometimes they're distributing something, and then you come, they give you a little, they measure it, and they tailor it to, they, they're looking at everybody, and they say, if we give you too much, it will not go around. But the grace of God is so great, and it's so abundant, every grace you need tonight is available for you. Because it says, through the abundance of the grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign. They will not rule over you. You will rule over them. All those problems, they look insurmountable. The abundance, abundant grace of God is coming to you tonight. And you will reign by one Jesus Christ. 
abundant grace. Somebody help me shout abundant grace. What are you having tonight? What's coming to you tonight? No matter how far you have gone, in the negative direction, the grace of God is greater than that. It will overtake you. It will bring you back. You will experience the love of God tonight. The forgiveness of God tonight. The freedom from God tonight. And the supply of everything you need tonight in Jesus' name. Look at this in 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 14. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 14. And the grace of our Lord Jesus was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. In Romans we learned it is abundant. But now he tells us, Paul the apostle said, he's gone so far. He's gone so deep. He's gone against the way of the Lord and it's a terrible thing that he had done. But he says now, it's not only that the grace of God came to save me, it's not only that the abundant grace of God came to save me, he said, exceedingly abundant grace you need that tonight it will come understand tonight whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved but i've been very bad the grace of god covers you i've been terrible the grace of god covers you i have done something i cannot even tell people because if i tell them they will stone me to death the grace of god covers you tonight Grace covers me. Grace covers me. Salvation is coming. Grace will bring it to you in Jesus' name. Verse 14, verse 14. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. It will come to you. The grace of the Almighty brings the repentant to the Almighty. The grace is like drawing you. It's like pulling you. It's like saying, don't be dejected. Don't be sorrowful. And don't uh, think that there is no hope for you. There is hope for you over there today. Everyone here, there is hope for you in Jesus' name. And then that grace of God forgives you, forgives you, and saves you, regenerates you, recreates you, reconciles you, the penitent to the Almighty. Look at Titus. Titus chapter 3. In Titus chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 7. Titus chapter 3, verse 7. It says, Be justified by His grace. That's the grace of God. We should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. It says, The grace of God, it forgives us. And it justifies us. What does that mean? It's like you know, somebody goes to court and everybody speaks against him. Witnesses speak against him. Lawyers speak against him. Advocates speak against him. His own conscience speaks against him. Even his countenance speaks against him. Everything is against him. And then the judge said, look up here. Everybody is against you. But I am on your side. What the Lord is saying is, Satan is against you. Demons are against you. Your neighbors are against you. Even your conscience accusing you, you are bad. You are sinful. You are terrible. You are deformed. You are defiled. And you, you are going to go to hell. And then God said, look up here. I am on your side. Am I talking to somebody there today? Is the Lord talking to somebody there today? Tonight, every sin you ever committed, because Jesus died for you on the cross of Calvary, he will forgive everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever is accusing you, whoever is accusing you, God says, God says, he's talking to somebody there. God says, he's talking to somebody there. I am on your side. Amen. Look at that, look at that. It says, for being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Look at um, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9. It says, but we'll see Jesus, you will see him tonight. In your mind's eye, you will see him tonight. 
In your conscience, you'll see him tonight. In your spirit, in your soul, in your heart, you'll see him tonight in Jesus' name. But we we'll see Jesus was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Look at this, look at this. Count with glory and honor that by the grace of God, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death, should taste death, should taste death. For every man, he died your days. I said, he died your death. You will not die prematurely. You will not die spiritually. You will not die a sinner's death. That when the fellow dies, they say, ah, that man, we know where he has gone. And they put their finger in their mouth, that will not be your Lord. Tonight, once you say, I receive Jesus. I accept Jesus. I make Jesus my Lord and Savior. He has tasted death for every man. Look at verse 10. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing, in bringing, in bringing many sons unto glory. I am one of them. I said I am one of them. To make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. And then look at verse 11. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one. He sanctifies, we are sanctified, and then we're united with him. It says they are all of one because it says for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Is not ashamed. He says, that's my brother. That's my sister. And this is the Lord Jesus Christ talking. It is done in Jesus' name. I'm coming now to Acts of the Apostles chapter 4. Acts of the Apostles chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 33. Acts of the Apostles chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 33. Look at verse 33. It says, in verse 33, And with great power, gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and tell me the rest over there and tell me the rest over there if you are part of the all tell me out aloud and great grace was upon them all what does that mean upon them all upon them over there I said upon them over there I said upon them over there. Yeah. I said upon them over there. Yeah. What kind of grace? Yeah. I said what kind of grace? Yeah. Great grace is for you tonight. Yeah. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're looking at verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, look at verse 9. It says in verse 9, and he said unto me, 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 my grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. What's the challenge before you? His grace is sufficient for you. What's the problem on your way? His grace is sufficient for you. What's the thing that is pinching you tonight? His grace is sufficient for you. What's the need of your life? Is grace is sufficient for you? What poverty is trying to grab your family, swallow up your family? Is grace is sufficient for you tonight? My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. When you feel weak, depressed, down, that grace will come and lift you up. Because it says that your weakness will experience the perfect power of God tonight. It will happen in Jesus' name. As a, as a child of God, God has grace for you. Abundant grace for you. Exceedingly abundant grace for you. Sufficient grace for you. Great grace for you. God's might is yours tonight. God's strength is yours tonight. 
God's power is yours tonight. God's authority is over you tonight. God's support is for you tonight. God's help is for you tonight. The amen is dying down. Divine enablement is for you tonight. Courage, courage, courage to face the future. And courage to overcome is for you tonight. And the conviction to live a victorious life, you got it tonight in Jesus' name. Point number two now, point number two now. Do you remember point number two? What is it? Conquering the mighty giants through the almighty. We're coming to Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. The children of Israel were now about to get to the promised land. It was a land flowing with milk and honey. And then as they got to the border, they sent spies out. And those spies came back and they gave a report. And they reported of the giants. And because of those giants, they were not able to get in to the promised land. They didn't understand. They didn't accept that they will overcome giants. You know, as a believer, as a real child of God, and you're going to the mountaintop. I said you're going to the mountaintop. You're going to reach your destination. Because joy is before you. Happiness before you. Success before you. Victory before you. Healing and health before you. Deliverance and dominion before you. It's a lamp flowing with milk and honey. What God created you for, you are going to achieve. But you know, if you don't understand that the giants on the way, when you see the giants, then you say, what will I do? Tonight you are going to conquer every giant against your life in Jesus' name. Numbers, 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 chapter numbers, uh, ch uh, chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 25. It says in verse 25, And they returned from searching the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh. And they brought back watch unto them unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Your future is fruitful. The promised land is fruitful. Once you cross over, I'm crossing over. I said once you cross over that fruitful land, you'll experience in Jesus' name. Verse 27, and he told him, and he said, we came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, uh -huh, this is a problem now. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. And the Amalekites dwell in the land in the, of the south. And the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once. Let us go up at once. Don't talk discouraging words to anybody or to yourself. Let us go up at once. Don't shed those tears of sorrow anymore. Let us go up at once. Don't sit back and don't stay back. Let us go up at once. Something good is before us. We're going up. Something wonderful is ahead of us. We're going up. And something exciting, interesting. And this is what you are made for. This is why God called you out of the land of Egypt. It's before us a land flowing with milk and honey. Let us go up. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? 
It says, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. I am well able. I am well able. Giants will not stop you. I am well able. Sickness will not stop you. I am well able. Evil powers will not stop you. I am well able. Demons will not stop you. I am well able. Scarcity, famine, poverty will not stop you. I am well able. No accommodation will not stop you. I am well able. Enemies in the land will not stop you. I am well able. For we are well able to overcome it. Verse 31, but the men that went up with him said, we be not able. That's their confession. That's not my confession. I said, that's not my confession. I am able. You are able. We are able. Deeper life is able. They said, they said, this is their own, this is their own thought. We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people of the that we saw in it are men of great stature, their giants, and there we saw, and there we saw, did you see their God? And there we saw, did you see the mountain mover? And there they saw, did you see the miracle worker? And there they saw, and there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight. They were not new creatures. They were in their own sight. They were not soldiers in the army of God, but they were, what, what were they? They were grasshoppers, and so were we in their sight. Giants. The giants in that, the princes, and the people of Israel from entering in and possessing the promised land. Look at that statement. Look at that statement. The giants hindered the princes and the people of Israel from entering and possessing the promised land. That statement is not true. It's not correct. It's not the giants that hindered them. The majority of the children of Israel did not even see the giants. Only these spies that went, only these certain people that came back and said we saw, all the 70 elders, they didn't see the giants. All the tribes, they didn't see the giants. All the multitudes, they didn't see the giants. They only got a report and they said giants are there, giants are there. You will not even see them. I said you will not even see them. Now, what really happened to them? Number one, fear of man. Fear of man. Fear of man. It was a fear of the giants. Not the giants. Not the giants. It's the fear of the giants that stopped them. Number one, fear of man. Number two, forgetfulness of his might. They forgot the might of the Lord. If they were able to think, they remember that Pharaoh is more than a giant. The magicians of Egypt were more than giants. And yet the mighty power of God subdued Pharaoh, subdued the chariots, and subdued all the magicians. But you know what? They forgot the might of the Lord. Every time remember the moment of his might. When you come to a crossroad, this is the moment of his might. When you come to challenge your life, this is the moment of his might. And I can tell you, you will overcome. Number three, it was focus on their mountain. Focus on their mountain. 
they were not looking at the creator of the heavens and the earth. They were not looking at the creator of the mountain. They were not looking at the one who is able to remove that mountain. They were focusing on their mountain. Number four, the feebleness of mind. The feebleness of mind. They were not strong in their minds. They were not strong in their conviction. They were not strong in their faith. It was the feebleness of their mind that stopped them. Number five, faithlessness in the ministers. And faithlessness in the members. Faithlessness in the mixed multitude. You see, the ministers, none of the ministers rose up except Caleb and Joshua. All the others, they kept quiet when the people were crying. When the people were turning back, when the people said, we're going to choose a captain and to lead us back, these people, they had faithlessness, ministers had faithlessness, members had faithlessness, the mixed multitude had faithlessness. Number six, you know what really troubled them? Number six, familiarity with miracle manner. Every day that morning, they took miracle manner and they became so familiar, and familiarity brings contempt. They became so familiar, they need to understand there's no nation on earth. There are no people on earth. There is no kingdom on earth sustained by the bread of heaven. Every day, every week, every month, every year for 40 years. And yet, because of their familiarity with the miracle manner, they forgot all about that, and they were crying, the giants, the giants. No, the giants are not your problem. It's the fear of the giants. It's the fear of man. Number seven, fault finding with Moses. Fault finding with Moses. They forgot how God had used Moses for them. And when they said they were giants, all they could have done is said, Moses, go to God. You always go to God. Moses, tell God. You always tell God. Moses, whatever the problem by the Red Sea, we know you can, this problem will solve you and God. If we cannot pray, Moses can pray. And because Moses can pray, we know that this problem is going to be solved. But they began to find fault with Moses. Why have you brought us here to die in the wilderness? Is there no grave in Egypt that you brought us here? And then fault finding with Moses. That was the thing that actually made them not to inherit. I will inherit. I said I will inherit. Now there are some people, you are asking me the question, I'm going to answer the question. Are there giants today? Are there giants today? Yes, but I'm going to use the, the letters of the word giant. Tell me the first letter there. G is the God of the heathens, the God of the heathens. We're coming to, we're coming to for Samuel, for Samuel chapter 17. For Samuel chapter 17, I'm reading here from verse 4, and it says, And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of the of Gaz, whose height was six a cubits and a span. We're going to conquer him. That Goliath, I said we're going to conquer him. Actually, do you know that Goliath, although they were looking at the stature, and they see him as a giant, they saw him as a giant, actually, look at where he put his strength and confidence. Look at verse 43. Verse 43, it says, And the Philistines said unto David, Am I a dog, that thou camest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David, tell me, by his gods. That was actually his confidence. It was not his spear. It was not his arrow. It was not his armor bearer. What he was standing on as a giant was his gods, his gods, his idols. And then he caused David by his gods. Those giants are still there today. Sometimes in the village. Sometimes it's superstition. Sometimes it's evil power. Sometimes it's magical power, sometimes it's talisman, sometimes it's idol. And then you say, that person has vowed that you will never have a child in your life. How did he vow? This is nobody. It's depending upon his God. We're going to conquer that God today. That person has said, as long as he's alive, this will never happen. I'm telling you, that good thing will happen. 
they will live to see your promotion. They will live to see your upliftment. Hey, look at this, look at this, verse 44. And the Philistines said to David, come to me. And I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and a spear and with a shield, but I come. Somebody there, I come. Don't run, don't run, don't run away. I come. Don't put your head in the sand and say, I don't know what I'm going to do. These people are terrible. They're going to destroy me. Uh-uh. Rise up. Look at them eyeball to eyeball. That idol of theirs will be burnt in everlasting fire. It says, it says, I come. Somebody help me shout, I come. I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day, when is your miracle? When is the manifestation of his might in your life? This day, will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee. He didn't have a sword. He didn't have a sword. But the sword of the spirit, the word of God, will smite that Goliath. I will smite thee and take thy head from thee. And I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. There's God at Magadha. I said, there's God at Bagada. Yeah. Look at verse 47. And all this army shall know that the Lord saveth not with the sword or spear. For the battle is, is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistines uh, arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hasted and ran and ran. Run away. Why are you running away? Don't you have God? Is God not to fight your battle for you? Why are you hiding? Come out and run. I said, come out and run. Where are you? I said, come out and run. Remove that garment of weakness. And that garment of depression. And that garment of crying. And that garment of you know, secrecy, hiding yourself, come out, you will run. And he ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took this stone and slung it. And he smote the Philistine. You will smite them. In his forehead, that the stone sunk into, the for into his forehead and he fell. Goliath will fall. Your giant will fall. Their gods will fall. And fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed. David prevailed. Put your name there. Put your name there. David prevailed. Put your, not just I. Not just I. Put your name. David prevailed. You have prevailed. Over the Philistines. With a sling. And with a stone, and he smote the Philistine, and he slew him. For, but there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore, David ran. David ran. David ran and stood upon the Philistine, and took his sword, and drew it out. Their own sword will destroy them. Their own evil will destroy them. And he drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, 
they fled and the children of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines until thou come to the valley and to the gates of Ekron and the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to Sharim even unto Gath and unto Ekron and the children of Israel are they here tonight? The Israel of God, I said I did here tonight. Yeah. And it says that the children of Israel returned from chasing after the Philistines and they spoiled their tents. Are you there? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. G for their gods. I infirmity. That's a giant in front of some people. I've been mean, here. This infirmity, this sickness. I cannot move. I cannot rise. I wanted to do exam. Every time I want to do exam, this infirmity will come. You conquer the giant tonight. Look at chapter 5 of John. John chapter 5, the giant of infirmity. John chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 5. It says in verse 5, and a certain man was there which had an infirmity, that's a, that was a giant, 30 and 8 years, and when Jesus saw him lie, and knew that he had been now a long time, in that case, says unto him, wilt thou be made whole tonight? Wilt thou be made whole? And the important man answered, sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. And Jesus says unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately, giant of infirmity defeated. And immediately, I said the giant of infirmity defeated. The man was made whole, and he took up his bed, and he walked. Somebody there, and he walked. Somebody there, and he walked. The fracture is healed. Somebody there, you are healed, and you walk. The lameness goes away, and then you rise up, and you walk. And all the weakness, everything, I cannot rise up, and you rise up, and you walk, and you walk, and you walk, and you walk. And you walk. It will happen tonight. And then it says, and the same day was a Sabbath day. That means uh, the day of the moment of his might. A, the adversaries, the adversaries, the adversaries. You see, that's a giant standing in front of some people. Anytime you make your plans, anytime you set your goal, anytime you want to raise the, uh, you know, the, the platform of your achievement higher, there you have the adversary. And the adversary is saying, where are you going? What are you doing? What are you planning? We're still here. You thought you are going to make progress? Not that we think, we know. Somebody there, I said, you know. Giants will not stop you. I said, giants will not stop you. Look at this, look at this. We're looking at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Uh, I'm reading from verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. It says, For a great door and effectual is opened unto me. Do you know there's an open door before you? Doors of opportunity. Doors of progress. Doors of achievement. is before you tonight. And look at this. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me. And tell me. Those are the giants. Those are the giants. And there are many adversaries. But thank God you have overcome. This day I have overcome. I said this day you have overcome. First Peter, First Peter, chapter 5, First Peter, chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. He cannot fail, he careth for you. He will not disappoint you, he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant. 
Because your adversary, the devil, as a running lion, walketh about seeking whom he will devour. And I'm not one of them. Whom receives steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same affliction are accomplishing your brethren that are in the world I have overcome. And of the giants, this may surprise you, means nothing. Nothing. I want to buy something, there's no money, nothing. I want to even buy the form so that I can take exam, there's no money, nothing. I want to move here, I don't have any contact. And it's not what you know, it's who you know, nothing. Nothing is like a giant before many people. And they don't have the strength, they don't have the resources, they don't have anything at all, and there is nothing. Supply will come today. Yeah. Miracle surplus will come today. Yeah. That nothing, a big zero in your life, that stands in your way, I don't have anything, I don't have anybody, I don't have any material thing, and I don't have any money, and no provision, nothing, standing as a giant, is conquered. Yeah. Luke chapter 5. In Luke chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 4. Luke chapter 5, verse 4. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught you are going to catch. And in verse 5, and Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken and have taken that gives people depression it gives them distress it gives them sorrow it makes them look at the future the future is bleak and black the future is like there's no future because we have nothing. We have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy watch tonight, this moment of might, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their nets break. Net breaking blessing tonight. Net breaking breakthrough tonight. Net breaking prosperity tonight. Where there was nothing, everything is going to come. The giants, the giants of their gods, the giants of infirmity, the giants of uh, adversaries, the giants of nothingness, the giants of terror, terror. They're terrified because look at what is happening. Look at the news we're hearing. Look at what they're saying from the village. Look at what they're saying from everywhere. And this terror comes to them as, uh, as uh, you know, a giant. And it's like, where can we go? How far can we reach? All those terrors are taken away tonight. Look at Isaiah chapter 54, and I'm reading from verse, uh, I'm reading from verse 14. Isaiah chapter 54, reading from verse 14. In righteousness shall thou be established. In righteousness shall thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. A new day has come. A new possibility has come. You'll be far from oppression in Jesus' name. <laughs> Thou shalt not fear. Giants will not stop you. The fear of giants will not stop you. And from terror, for it shall not come near you. From terror, it shall not come near you. But 17, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Somebody shout, Amen. 
Jeremiah chapter 15. Jeremiah chapter 15. Jeremiah chapter 15. I'm reading here from verse 20. And I will make thee unto this people a faced brazen wall. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee to save thee, and to deliver thee, says the Lord. And I will deliver thee out of the hands of the wicked. And I will redeem thee out of the hands of the terrible. You'll walk over them. You will march over them. You will move on in Jesus' name. Giants, G for gods, I for infirmity, A for adversaries, N for nothingness, T for terror, S for the storm. Storms of life hinder some people. And they cannot, you know, they're galloping and they're running and they're saying, I'm going there. I'm getting it. They're excited. All of a sudden, a storm arises. And that storm becomes like a giant standing before them. And it's like, oh, they've come again. They've started again. No, you're going to overcome. I said, you will overcome. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4 verse 35 and the same day when the evening was come he says unto them he says unto you I said he says unto you let us pass over to the other side. You are going to the other side. You remained on this side for too long a time. Now the day of progress has come. The day of success has come. The day of achievement has come. The day of victory has come. The day of dominion has come. Let us pass over unto the other side. And when he had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. Look at this, look at this. Verse 37. And there arose... And there arose, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full, and he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? No, you will not perish. He told you I will make you fishers of men, you cannot perish. He said, you are going to reign over the 12 tribes of Israel. You cannot perish. He said, these are my brothers, my sisters, and my mother. Doing the will of God, you cannot perish. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you unto myself. So that where I am, there you will be also. How can you perish? Who is telling you a lie that you will perish? Who is deceiving you, blindfolding you that you will perish? You will not perish. I said you will not perish. In verse 39, and he arose, is arising for you. And he rebuked the wind, and he said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm in your life. There's going to be a great calm. In your soul, there's going to be a great calm. That giant is defeated. The giant of the storm is conquered in your life in Jesus' name. Psalm 107, Psalm 107, I'm reading from verse 29. Psalm 107, verse 29, Psalm 107, tell me the verse. Look at it, look at it. He maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. The giant of a storm in your life, that thing that is running, that thing that is doing like they will swallow you up, everything is calm tonight. Verse 20, verse 20 of that same Psalm 107, he sent his word. Where is he sending the word tonight? He sent his word and he healed them. I can see them there. He healed them. 
I behold the healing there. He healed them. I see all the ache and all the pain and all the fever. And he healed them. I see the person that is saying, I didn't even want to come. I, I didn't know I could reach here today. And he healed them. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Giants are conquered tonight. You are going to move forward. Everything that tried to stop your way, the giants, they are conquered tonight. And what Caleb will shout, what Caleb will say, let us go up at once. Everybody, let us go up at once. For we are well able. I will go up at once today. Even before this week runs out, I'm going to achieve. I said before this week runs out, you are going to achieve. You are well able. What are you? You are well able. You are well able. All the giants are cleared out of your way in Jesus' name. Point number three now. Point number three now. Confirming the measureless gifts of the Almighty. Confirmation tonight. My brother there, I said confirmation tonight. My sister, daughter there, I said confirmation tonight. Jeremiah, Jeremiah. I'm reading from chapter 32. Jeremiah, chapter 32. And I'm reading from verse 17. Jeremiah, chapter 32. We're reading from verse 17. You are conquering. Look at this. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm. And there is nothing too hard for thee. In my life, there is nothing too hard for thee. All these challenges around you, there is nothing too hard for him. All this sickness, all this infirmity, there is nothing too hard for him. You'll solve your problem tonight. Verse 18, thou showest loving kindness unto thousands. Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands. The thousands who are here tonight. Thou showest loving kindness unto. I said unto. He's blessing everybody tonight. How can he pass you by? He's saving all sinners tonight. How can he pass you by? He's healing all sick people here tonight. How can he pass you by? He's showing his love to everyone, all the thousands here tonight. How can he pass you by? He showeth loving kindness unto thousands and